Well, this is a <clears throat> special request video for pace 1107. The 11th pace, almost done with Algebra 1 at this point. Um, pages 23 through 25. And I had a student email me and, and uh, already in September there at this point, And they had a question about how to solve these problems on page 25. So I want to do a lesson um, about, let's talk about three and four and how we can set them up. <clears throat> and then I want to do another lesson about the bottom because I think the percent problems might even be trickier, <clears throat> 25 and 26, and uh, so I kind of want to give you a heads up on how to solve those. So uh, let's talk first about number three. And I like to, with problems like this, draw a diagram where I say I've got these two boxes equals a third box. <clears throat> And in this problem, number, what is this, number three, all right, says there were 300 people out of play. Some paid $5 for the reserved seats, and then $3 for general admission, okay? And we know that the total amount of money that they brought in was $1,080, okay? Now, we're going to get to that in a minute, <clears throat> but how many, there's a 300 in there. We've got to figure out where does that 300 go? So we have some tickets that are $5 each, some that are $3 each. Um, in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the five up above it, all right, just to make this a little less complicated. I know it has to add up to 300 total over here, 300 tickets. So I don't know how many are the reserved. Let's go with a small number like 50. If we imagined that 50 bought tickets at this price, how many would be buying them at this price? Did you come up with 250? What if we had 100? Then it would be 200, right? 125. And this would be 175. So what are you doing every time in your head? You are subtracting, right? So literally, every time I give you a number, we'll call this X, okay? Whatever I give you as a number in your head, you're taking 300 and subtracting that in order to get the number of general admission tickets. So let's think about the 50 again. If I gave you 50, then what you're doing in your head is doing 300 minus the number I give you, okay? So now we can set up an equation. <clears throat> and we can say that 5x, okay, plus 3 times 300 minus x has to equal the total number of tickets is 300. <clears throat> but the total value is this $1,080, okay? So $5 per ticket times X number of tickets, $3 per ticket times the remainder of the tickets, and that will give you the total $1,080, okay? So from there, you can solve and get X. Once you know X, then you can plug in and figure out how many of each. Check your work then, all right? <clears throat> let's look at um, let's look at number four. It says a housewife paid seven dollars and eighty cents for five grams of five kilograms of peanuts and three kilograms of walnuts. The walnuts are twenty cents per gram more than the peanuts. How much did she pay? per kilogram for each. <clears throat> All right, so the which one did she pay the least for? Walnuts are 20 cents a kilogram more than the peanuts, so the peanuts are cheaper. So we have five kilograms, okay, of the, we'll let X equal the price of the peanuts. Okay, then <clears throat> the walnuts, price of the walnuts, we 
What do you think we're going to do with that price? <clears throat> that price, it says walnuts are 20 cents per kilogram more than the peanuts. Okay, so whatever the price of the peanuts is, we have to add 20, but now here's the thing, we're doing this in dollars. Okay, so since we have $7.80, 7.8, we need to actually make this point 20. That's a little tricky, okay? <clears throat> but this is gonna come out in a decimal number, and then we want this to be 20 cents more per, <clears throat> per kilogram. All right, then we can multiply five times X plus three kilograms of the walnuts times the price for the walnuts, which is 0.20 cents more than the price of the peanuts. And now that equals the total paid, which was $7.80. And again, from there you can just solve and get the value for X. <coughs> and then add 20 cents to that and you have the price for the walnuts. Another way you could do this to not have to deal with decimals is put it all in cents. So how many cents is in $7.80? It would be 780, okay? So if we got rid of this decimal, got rid of this decimal here, now we could solve and have do exactly the same problem and the answer is gonna come out in cents per pound instead of dollars, okay? And uh, it'll be a whole number. It'll be easy to, easy to calculate. All right, so I'm going to let you finish three and four, and we'll come back and do a short video about percent problems.